People of God, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Friends, welcome to worship with Morrisville Presbyterian Church. Whether you are a longtime member or visiting with us for the first time, whether you are here in our sanctuary or joining us from the comfort of home, we welcome you and it is a joy to be in worship with you this day. Friends, if you are in our pews, we invite you to take that red friendship folder and note your presence with us and pass it to your neighbor so they can do the same. And if you are visiting and would like us to follow up on your time here this week, we would really love if you could in include enough information in that red folder so we can do that well in the week to come. I, there are always important announcements in our bulletin, and I hope you will take the time to read all of them, but I do want to draw your attention to two of them, the first being that our mission trip team that gets ready to take off for West Virginia later this summer is hosting their first car wash of the year, their bake sale as well, opportunities to invest in the the mission and ministry that they undertake this summer. And so we hope that you will give generously to both the... Um, excuse me, both the bake sale and the car wash. That will be happening immediately following service today right outside on your way out. So we hope you will join us for that and support that mission and ministry that our youth are undertaking later this summer. And additionally, our congregational meeting is next Sunday, the 22nd, and we hope you will join us there at that congregational meeting when we will elect new, we will hear the report of our nominating committee to elect new officers for the coming season in the life of the church. So please join us. That will be held after worship, immediately after worship here in the sanctuary next week, and we hope you will join us for that important meeting in the life of the church. Friends, we continue to give thanks for our life together. And so as we give thanks for that life, as we pray for all of the burdens and toils in this world, let us worship our God together. Please stand as you are able and join us in our responsive call to worship. Jesus offers a new old commandment that we should love each other. With the incredible power and the unfathomable depth of God's love for us, we can trust, love one another. And it is in this, our love for one another, that the world will know whom and what we worship. Come, children of God, let us love one another. Please continue to stand and join us in singing hymn number 301, Let Us Build a House.
need, let us build a house where all are welcome. Today we recognize this call is is a desire that matches the best of our heart's intentions. And yet it is a call that demands much of our feet and our hands. We hear God's invitation to look inward, to confront what keeps us from unity and peace. So trusting in the greatness of God's mercy, let us confess our sins using the prayer of confession as it is found in your bulletin followed by a time for silent confession. Merciful God, we confess that so often our discipleship has been weak. We have failed to serve as Jesus served. Forgive us. We have failed to love one another as Jesus loves us. Forgive us. We have been happy to proclaim our devotion to Jesus' and then denied him by our actions. Forgive us. Merciful God, empower us by your spirit to be steady and true to you in every time of trial. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus said, I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. And having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The good news, therefore, is this. In Jesus Christ, we are loved and we are forgiven. Together, let us proclaim and give thanks the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. Beloved church, as forgiven people, let us share the peace of Christ with one another using American Sign Language. May the peace of Christ be with you, and we say, and also with you. Let us share with one another the peace of Christ. Let us pray. Living God, help us to hear your holy word with open hearts and open minds. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join me in our responsive Old Testament reading from Psalm 148. Together, let us listen for the word of God. Praise the Lord. Praise Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, 
creeping things and flying birds, king of the earth and all princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I would now like to invite our young friends forward for a time for young disciples. Hello, Tucker. Oh, it is a loud mic. Hey, you heard that too? Hello, come on down. I know, I know. You, you heard it, the echo. All right, hello, everyone. Coming around the corner. Come on down. Come on down. Hello, everyone. Hello. It is great to see you all today. Hello. Come on down. Hello, Raphael. It's good to see you all. So I have something in my bag, and I wonder if you know what it is. I have a feeling that you'll know what it is. You see this? It's a rubber band. It is a rubber band. You know what I love about rubber bands? Well, yes, because they stretch it, but even when they stretch, they come back to their form. No matter how big you stretch them, they they come back and they snap back. Uh, Adults, what we we call that, we call that resilience. When you stretch something really big and then it comes back to its form. And the reason why I'm talking about resilience today is because today we are thanking our Sunday school teachers and just like a rubber band, know how, how much we stretch them this year, whether it was COVID at the beginning of the year or the Omicron variant halfway through, we changed their Sunday school classrooms. We asked them to do bigger and better things. And they, every time they were stretched, they came back and they were always there. They were there in our classrooms to love us. 
They were there in our classrooms to show how much we love God. And they were there in our classrooms to show how much we can love each other. So today we are going to thank our Sunday school teachers because they are so resilient. They show, they show us how resilient we are as a church. And unfortunately, next week, next Sunday, is the last Sunday of Sunday school before the fall. So we're taking the opportunity to give them a gift today. They can't see it, but it's going to be a fun surprise. And what I'm going to ask you to do after we do our prayer today, after we give thanks for our Sunday school teachers, I'm going to ask you to go with me and Mr. West down the center aisle and give these, do you see these presents right here? Mm -hmm. We're going to give them out to the Sunday school teachers out there because they love us and because they are resilient. So let us pray. Repeat after me. God, we thank you, God, we thank you. for your gift of teaching. And all, who teach us. and all who teach us. And we pray, and we pray that, we might grow that we might grow to love you and one another. To love you and one another. Amen. Amen. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask those who have been a Sunday school teacher this year to please stand so we can wave to them. All who have been a Sunday school teacher this year, thank you. I'll take two. All right, so you, all right, so you see them? Of, you both of my parents. Okay, you can take both your parents. Thank you. Yeah, one's your parents. So we're going to take these gifts. We have a plant for you all, a very nice flower. And we are going to give these gifts to you because we are very grateful for all that you have done. Stay standing. So stay standing. All right, so can somebody give one to Mr. Drew? Can you go up there and give one to him? Yeah, all right. Follow Mr. West with the cart. All God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. I certainly know that my faith seeds were planted early on through Sunday school teachers who faithfully showed up even when I didn't. Sunday school teachers, you know it's true, you know it's true. Sunday school teachers who faithfully showed up prepared to share their own faith through annoying classmates who wouldn't be quiet or through any number of disruptions. And this year in particular, I cannot even begin to describe the gratitude that Alex has already expressed, that, but that I would echo for our teachers who have continued against many odds and many frustrating circumstances to plant those seeds of faith in our young people. And we give tremendous thanks for their faithfulness that is taking root in ways we cannot even yet begin to imagine or fathom. So for all of you who have served in that way this year, thank you from the bottom of our collective hearts. You are doing this ministry and this work on behalf of all of us. So thank you. Friends, our New Testament reading today comes from the Gospel according to John, the 13th chapter, beginning with the 31st verse. Listen for the word of God. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children... I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. 
I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord will stand forever. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do me a favor. Pull out your hymnal. You don't need to worry, Yoon. This, no, you don't need to worry. But we are going to sing number 300. I'm serious. Pull out your hymnal. We're going to sing the first verse of hymn number 300. It might be familiar to you. Are we ready? We're going to sing this together. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love. By our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Thank you for indulging me. I love this hymn. I have probably been singing it since the time I was in Sunday school. I love this hymn. It serves as a constant reminder that at the heart of everything we do as Christians, there is love. Or perhaps more accurately, there should be love. They will know we are Christians by our love. So riddle me this, why is it if love is so central to the Christian gospel? Why is it that one of the most constant critiques I hear, I imagine you hear it too, why is it that one of the most constant critiques we hear about Christians is that they're all a bunch of hypocrites. They claim to love Jesus, and yet they behave in ways that Jesus would abhor. They claim to love the poor and outcast, and yet they never spend any of their time or their money actually with the poor or the outcast or loving them. They claim to have Jesus in their hearts, and yet they spend their time and money and energy and voice and vote defending things that would cause Jesus to weep. They might announce their love for a neighbor, and yet in the very next breath offer judgment and gossip and critique behind their back. We will know you are Christians by your love. Prove it. The world seems to respond. Walk the walk, then. Don't just talk the talk. Your talk is nothing without the walk. Here in the 13th chapter of John, Jesus is pleading with the disciples to walk the walk that he has been walking, that they have been attempting to walk together, but to walk the walk that will ultimately take Jesus all the way to the cross. Little children, he says to these grown men, perhaps because they needed to listen as attentively or as children do, often better than we adults, Little children, listen to me now like you have never listened before. Where I am going, you cannot come. So when I'm not here anymore, this is what your discipleship needs to be. This is what it means to follow me, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, and only this, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Love one another. 
simple enough for a child to memorize, and profound enough that even the most mature believers are stretched over and over again to put it into practice. Love one another. Because you see, this love that Christ calls for, this servant love, this simple yet profound love, this love that washed the feet of those who would betray him, this is a love willing to sacrifice and walk all the way to the cross. A love willing to lay down its life for the sake of another. And once we settle into that reality, this love that Christ calls us to becomes a love that we feel unable to replicate. A love that in theory sounds beautiful and wonderful, but a love that we feel unable to put into practice, at least in the way that Jesus would call us toward. Love one another as I have loved you. We struggle to emulate or even imagine this kind of love, and so we put it in this unattainable category up on a shelf and assume that this was meant for all those holier than we are, all those who are, who are a little more faithful than we are. I, I will do my best, God. Some days I will do my best, God. But you, know, you and I both know my love can't go that far. I mean, I, certainly not for a stranger, much, much less an enemy, much less one who would betray me, as Jesus has done. I imagine many of the disciples felt the same way once they counted the cost. They certainly showed it in their betrayal, their denial, their abandonment of Jesus when the time came, when the rubber hit the road, when walking the walk led to the cross. But these words were meant for them, just as they are meant for us today. But how? How can we love with that same love of Christ? How can we love in a way that we lay down our life for the sake of another? Ronald Cole Turner reminds reminds us that laying down our lives at its core can mean any number of ways in which we lay aside our claim to our own lives. We lay down our lives, our claim to our lives, when we put others first. We lay down our lives, our claim to our lives, when we live for the good of others. We lay down our lives when we make time for others. To love others is to lay down our life for theirs. Our priorities for theirs. Our timeline for someone else's. Our to-do list for someone who needs our doing more. Our needs or our desires for the needs of others for the needs of the world. When we lay down the completely normal human desire to live for ourselves, and when instead we allow the love of God to reorient us toward the needs of others, we are laying down our lives. And in those situations, we are not simply using words to tell people about God's love or to tell people about the meaning of the cross and the resurrection. We are embodying it in our living, letting our lives declare the truth of God's love. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. There's a story in Isaac Dennison's book, Out of Africa, about a boy named Kitao. And he appeared at the author's door one day to ask for a job as a domestic servant. She hired him, but was surprised when after three months he asked for a letter of recommendation to go work for Sheikh Ali bin Salam, a Muslim who lived in a nearby town. 
And Dennison really liked Kitao. She offered to, to raise his pay in, in order to keep him, but, but money was not his interest. You see, Kitao had decided to become either a Christian or a Muslim. And his purpose in working for Denison, his only purpose in working for Denison, had been to see up close the way a Christian lived. And now that he had worked for Denison and seen the ways of Christians, he would go and observe Sheikh Ali to see how Muslims lived. And then he would decide. The author remembers how she wished Katow had told her this before he came to live and work with her. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Would someone like Katow want to be a Christian by watching you? Would he know the depth of love Christ offers to the world by watching you? What about here at church? Here in our church family, would Katow want to be a Christian by watching our life together? Is Christ's love known and shared here? Do you participate in that type of love? And believe me, I know the automatic answer here is, what? yes, of course, this is the church. But then I think about all those people who think Christians are hypocrites. And I wonder how that came to be their reality. Was it by watching Christians? Is it by going to church? Is it Christ's love known and shared that's here? Believe me, friends, I, I have certainly been witness to an abundance of love known and shared within this family in meal deliveries, in cards of healing and encouragement. I have seen them for others. I have, I have experienced them myself. But what about when you cross paths with that particular sibling in Christ who has a gift for getting under your skin. Or the one who hurt you badly years ago. What about that person who sits across the aisle who you've seen for months but you've never made an attempt to meet or get to know because it's just easier to talk to the people you already know. Would she know Christ's love here in this place? Or would he? I know I get it, friends. Sometimes we think, gosh, Rachel, ch church should be a place, a kind of shelter from all of these trials and troubles. I shouldn't have to worry about this stuff in the place where I'm supposed to be most comfortable, where I can find refuge, where my friends are. I, I deal with strains and struggles outside of this place all week. Why? This is supposed to be a refuge from all that But I had someone say to me once, you know, the truth is God loves us way too much to ever abandon us to that kind of church. To ever abandon us to a church where life is just easy, where we're never growing, where we're never being challenged or bump up against difficult things or difficult feelings so that we can grow and stretch in that love. God loves us too much to leave us as we are and so would not abandon us to that kind of church because unfortunately, friends, God, God isn't actually so interested in making us comfortable as in working on our hearts and shaping and forming that love of Christ within us. And so God calls us into a Christian community 
a church family and blesses us with the opportunity every time we are together to love one another as Christ has loved us. To bump up against people and situations that, that exercise our hearts that stretch our capacity to be gracious and patient and loving, loving the way Jesus loves, so that when we do, when we allow ourselves to be stretched, to grow, to be more patient, to more loving, we do that here with one another so that we go out in the world, we will share it. So that the world will know we are Christians by the love that we practice here, that we take out there. And I realize this may sound like a burdensome obligation. I, I'm in a new members class right now, and they're wonderful, and I know you don't want me to scare them off. But the good news, the good news, friends, the miracle, the miracle of the Christian life is that loving the way Jesus loved isn't an obligation imposed on us from the outside. It is a miracle God brings forth from within our own hearts when we open ourselves to the love offered in Christ. The fact that we have a church here at all is testimony, testimony that God has been working this miracle in our hearts for years. You, you can't bring a group together a quarter of this size and there not be frictions or misunderstandings or personality clashes. And the fact is, we have a passionate, committed church in this place, and it is evidence of Christ's love for us here that is at work in each of our hearts. I have no doubt in my mind. It is that love, Christ's love, that sacrificial love that binds our community together into a fellowship of mutual love and respect and forgiveness, giving us a chance to share a love that shines with the glory of God's love. And that, my friends, is a contagious kind of love. A love that makes someone like Katow or someone who sees you on the street or at the supermarket or even in your own home that makes someone pause and wonder, what makes love do that? What makes her love like that? What empowers him to share that kindness and that love with people he barely knows? The truth is, if we open our heart to this kind of love, to the love Christ calls us to live, I think we'd be amazed the way that amazing, surprising, powerful love would fill our hearts and lead us to reach out in directions we never would have expected. And those may not even be outside of this place, but inside it too. The question is not whether that kind of love is possible for you or me. With God, all things are possible. The question is whether or not we have the nerve to open ourselves up to that love of Christ. Whether we have the courage to let him draw us into his kind of love. A love that goes to the cross. A love that lays down its life for another. A love that is willing to walk the walk and not just talk the talk. I can promise you, it's not always easy. But I can promise you, it is faithful. I can promise you, it is possible. Because how else, how else will the world know? And so may it be our prayer each day. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity may one day be restored, and they'll know we are Christians.
Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, thou know we are Christians by our love. Having heard God's word of love read and proclaimed for us this day, let us seek to respond to that audacious effort to seek and live a life of love outwardly as well as inwardly. So let us stand as you are able and join together in singing the hymn 316, Where Charity and Love Prevail. Please join me as we affirm our faith through these words from the Apostles' Creed. As we seek to follow Christ in this world, let us state what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We come to this place as we are, full with concerns and joys that we bring from the world around us. And we come to this place hearing God's call to love. So let us receive and orient ourselves in God's love for nourishment in the walk ahead. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, tell us how to catch lightning in a bottle. Show us how something so grand as you can be glorified in the vessel that is humanity and creation. We give you great thanks, O God, for this mystery. 
that the stuff of heavens and trumpets and clouds of glory may be known in the breaking of bread and standing in solidarity and the melody of the morning dove. There are many reasons we come to you in gratitude this day, O God, and having heard your words proclaimed this morning, we give thanks for the way you reveal yourself to us in the story of your Son and in the command to love as you loved us. Beloved Christ, Son of man, we yearn to go to where you are going, a kingdom where fears are eased, pain is healed, and peace is known. For Jesus, we know all too well that our reality falls short of your grand vision. Our bones ache for the ten people who were shot and killed in Buffalo, New York yesterday. Our hearts try to shut off the sadness with distance. Our gut is wrenched, hearing that these folks were killed once again because of their race. Yet we follow you, Christ, who goes where others run from, as we allow ourselves to grieve as we stand with our black siblings and humanity who are afraid this day, as we pray for the families and the community left to make sense of what is senseless. Hear our prayer, O God. Son of God, we lift up the prayers on our hearts in this very room and in the rooms of those at home for family, friends, and strangers who are sick with COVID, that they may catch their breath and be restored in energy. We pray for healthcare workers and all who are caregivers, whether professional or familial, that they may be given a spirit of perseverance and renewal in a time of weariness. And God, we pray for all who do your kingdom work, whether grand or minute, that we may continue to orient our world at the center of love instead of hate, greed, and power. Spirit of the living God, you were there on the day when the disciples heard the final words from their teacher and friend, Jesus Christ. So convene in us the same compassion and belief in the days ahead. Where we face cynicism, shield our eyes with childlike faith. Where we face isolation, release the gravitational forces of community and belonging. Where we face the unknown challenges of our days, grace us with the spirit of presence, peace, and courage, so that we might dare to love our neighbor as much as you continue to love us unconditionally. We pray all these things in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The mystery and glory of God's love is worth our praise, our prayer, and our dedication. We have the opportunity to give of who we are and what we have to God's work in the world. So let us respond to God in faith and action. Let us give of our morning tithes and offerings.
us pray. Ever-present and ever-gracious God, we come to you as a church of people desperately wanting to profess our love for you and one another. So use these gifts and our whole selves as vehicles for your love that you proclaim in the world. In your holy name we pray. Amen. As you are able, please remain standing and join together in singing our closing hymn, 754, Help Us Accept Each Other. My friends, Jesus reminds us, go and live and love as I have loved you. It will not be easy, but it will be faithful. And through you, the world may come to know the abundance, the power, the majesty, the beauty of God's love that is in you. And so may we be those vessels through whose, whom Christ's love is known and shared. And as we go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you, be with those you love, and with those you are called to love, this day and forevermore. And together we say, Amen. Amen.